Who's taking it? Well, those who can afford it. According to a 2022 report by the American Institute for Clinical and Economic Review, the monthly cost of a semaglutide treatment in the USA exceeds 1,000 US dollars a month. In the US, some state-level Medicaid programs and private insurances cover the treatment, but the national Medicare program is currently prohibited by law from covering prescriptions for weight loss. The Biden administration, however, has vowed to do something against obesity. So maybe that law is going to change. If that happens, the costs for obesity treatments in the US will be staggering. 42% of American adults are obese, so that could add up to hundreds of billions of dollars per year. But of course, as we saw in an earlier video, the detrimental health effects of obesity also have enormous economic costs, and those are of the same order of magnitude. And the expenses for the treatment might drop when more drugs are developed that can be produced at a lower price. Though, to be fair, the situation in the US is particularly dire because healthcare there is so expensive. According to data from 2022, a monthly supply of semaglutide in France costs only 242 US dollars, in Turkey 95, and Somalia is one step away from famine. And then there's the moral conundrum. The success of these weight loss drugs by suppressing appetite drives home that being overweight is in many cases a consequence of how our brains are wired. For some people, following their natural feeling of hunger leads to healthy weight. For others, it leads to being overweight or obese. These people then have the choice of either suffering because they're hungry or suffering because they're overweight. Handing out these drugs on prescription only to those who chose being overweight as the lesser evil and leaving those who permanently starve themselves to their suffering strikes me as morally questionable. I guess this is why those who beat weight gain with dieting and exercise now feel somewhat cheated if others get the same result with less pain and effort and also why people on Ozempic are often described as lazy. Another odd thing that's been happening, especially in the US and the UK, is that some people in the body positivity movement aren't pleased with the development. The body positivity movement has been telling obese people to accept their body, which is all well and fine if self-acceptance is realistically the best outcome you can hope for. But semaglutide reveals that, given a choice, many obese people prefer losing weight over accepting it. In summary, the new weight loss drugs are remarkably efficient at least as long as you take them. They're a game changer for many who are struggling with obesity. But they're also being used by many others, especially women who don't need to lose weight but have grown up believing that they should. The drugs are currently expensive and hard to get, which makes the weight loss game exclusive and creates tensions among people who are obsessed with appearances. But overall, I think it's a good development because I suspect that as it becomes easier to lose weight for people who don't need to lose weight, it'll lose its appeal. Now maybe we could get Novo Nordisk to come up with a drug that helps us reduce nonsense intake. Thanks for watching, see you next week.